Welcome to Tea Time with Sue. In this episode, University President Sue Thomas sits down with Laura Bates, Executive Director of the Student Union and Campus Recreation. Now in her 16th year at Truman, Laura oversees the facilities, staff, and students in both the Student Union Building and the Campus Recreation Center. This includes extensive involvement with major events such as Truman Week, Homecoming, and organizational recruitment. Let's jump into the conversation. So I am super excited, Laura, to be here today with you for Tea Time with Sue. Yeah, thanks for having me. Sure. So let's start out. What's your official formal title at Truman? My official title is Executive Director of the Student Union and Campus Recreation. Okay. That sounds very official and formal. You want to tell me what that involves? Um, I usually say that it's a really fancy way that I work in both the union and the rec, Um, but there's a lot of things that go in with that. So I help oversee the buildings, the programming, work with the staff, both professional staff and students. Um, And then I have some things that are kind of mixed in there that's more direct work with students, such as work advising student government, working with fraternity and sorority life, et cetera. So tell me a little bit about fraternity and sorority life. Some people believe that we have no Greeks on campus. Some people believe that we're mostly Greek, right? I'm not sure there are a lot of people who understand how Greek we are here and the important roles Greek play on our community. Yeah, so um, our fraternity and sorority community is somewhere between 18% or somewhere around 18% of our campus population. Um, I believe that they've kind of responded as a community to the general enrollment trends. So um, we have organizations from Panhellenic, IFC, and then MPHC, which is our historically black Greek letter organizations. Um, I think they provide great opportunities for students to learn in concentrated ways, great skills, um, develop partnerships and relationships, build networks working opportunities. Um, but they are, there's about 22 organizations within wow. the, that umbrella, which is great. Um, and then most of those members are involved in things outside of their own organization to kind of show that well-roundedness. Um, so. Sure. Can, can you talk a little bit about their philanthropy work, especially yeah. like at homecoming? So uh, charitable giving, serve direct service are things that are really passionate and tied into the values of each one of the organizations. Some have uh, philanthropies that are, will benefit the local community. Others will have things that are on a broader national base. So like um, Phi Kappa Phi has a, um, or Pi Kappa Phi, sorry. Uh, (laughs) They'll forgive you. uh, They have a um, homegrown, so they work with um, developing um, resources for folks with disabilities, um, building ramps, et cetera, where Delta Zeta has things that are for Starkey Hearing, so they'll do a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. on campus. They do a hike out at Thousand Hills. Um, They'll host a kind of pageant of sorts this spring for things. Um, Lambda Chi has Feeding America. Uh, MPHC Phi Beta Sigma does things with March of Dimes, and then they try to do a lot of stuff with the local community here. So um, it's a real good blend of how can we give back monetarily to our community, and then how can we be actually putting in time and face and work. So if I remember correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, they raised over 16000 this yeah. past homecoming? so it's really impressive how they come together. Alums help chip in as well. So um, this past year for Greek Week, it was the YMCA. So they helped buy, their funds went to do a freezer, um, helped them expand their food over the summer distribution <laughs> to kids, and then bought supplies for their summer crafts. Um, so Greek Week planning for this year is undergoing. I'm hoping that we get to make an announcement about our community partner shortly after the school semester starts. So so can you talk about, along those lines, some of the big activities that you are involved with? You, I mean, I know you do a ton with student groups, yep. right? At the beginning of the semester, I don't know if you get to sleep at all, given everything that's going on. The first six weeks are really busy. So. Yeah, yeah. So what are some of the big events that are happening and some of the small events and the groups that you work with to do those? Oh, goodness. Um, my favorite is activities fair, both fall and spring. Mm-hmm. Um, most of our student groups participate, and if not, we can help you get connected mm-hmm. to them. Um, but that's always really just exciting for students that are eager. They get to talk with friends. They get to meet people, particularly new students. It's mm-hmm. 
things, it can be really overwhelming, but I think that our clubs are really just looking for ways for people to connect. So um, they're really gracious of trying to get you involved and connected. Um, so that's coming up in January. We always look forward to those each semester. Um, one year it was snowed out each time we did it. So uh, hopefully- It is Kirksville. Exactly. Yeah. Hopefully winter will be good for us so we can have that this spring. Um, fall homecoming is always really big, so staff in my office work to help coordinate that. Um, that's always a really good time because it usually brings alumni uh, recruitments, both for fraternity and sorority life, but just general um, um, business organizations, et cetera, happen in the union a lot. So that's always a really exciting time where students are more actively recruiting beyond the activities fair. The rec, fitness wellness classes are always really fun um, to see those get started each semester just because students are looking for ways to find balance and then also um, just establish some routines for good healthy behaviors. I, IMs is really popular. Um, Watching students get very competitive and supporting each other is always very interesting. Um, volleyball is really popular. You've got floor hockey and pickleball is becoming more and more so popular by the day. Yeah. Um, I love Truman Week. These are a lot of fall things, mm -hmm. but uh, that's always really new and exciting. And when returning students and faculty staff come together to help support incoming students. That's always yeah. fun to see. So like the fair and the activities that we have going on a move-in day, ice cream social for a long time has been my favorite just because you just show up and eat ice cream and hang out. Have you danced in the fountain? I have walked through the fountain mm -hmm. and actually I did dance in the fountain All last right. spring. Um, in the union, we celebrate flamingo moments. So those are yeah. moments where you really stand out and go above and oh, beyond. Cool. Um, so last year we bought an inflatable flamingo suit and we needed something to do. So um, <laughs> we went and danced in the fountain in our flamingo suit. Uh, mm -hmm. I also have a pool float that looks like a flamingo, Ooh, but have not fun. blown that up. So maybe this spring. Oh. All right. Yep. Something to look forward to. Let yep. me know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you came in 2006 to yep. Truman. I did. So what did you start doing when you first got here? Um, I worked in Multicultural Affairs, which is now CDI. Mm -hmm. I was the program advisor over there. So I worked with planning monthly heritage programming. I worked with student organizations, study hall, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I'm not going to age you, but yeah. now we're like 16 I've been here plus a while. years yeah. later, right? What made you stay here? I love what I get to do every day. Um, somebody asked me this not that long ago. Um, I think I have a plan for my day, and most often than not, that is out the window about five minutes walking <laughs> in the door. I can relate. Um, but it's really fun to work with our students and our staff to help them build what they believe is their legacy. And I think that's really exciting to be a part of mm -hmm. that, um, just maintain those connections and help them have something that comes to reality and then from a staff perspective how are we building blocks in to really keep that going sure. um, so once that student is gone um, what they maybe have worked really hard towards has some lasting impact very cool so when I hear everything that you talk about I think about when do you have time to do anything else yeah. other than all of this stuff but rumor has it you are an avid reader true um I did I set a goal for myself last year so of? Uh, my goal was 50 books, so one about a week. Uh, Four-day work week last summer was, <laughs> provided a little bit of flexibility, and I got sure. way ahead of things. So uh, How far ahead of things? I finished at 136 for the year. 136? Yep. So, okay, so first help me understand, why did you set a goal of reading 50 books, and how did you get to 136? I wanted some healthy patterns of just not going home at the end of the day and watching TV or being on an electronic device. Um, so I decided that I needed to disconnect. Um, I try to read when I walk. Um, so, like, I live not too far from campus. So if I walk to campus mm -hmm. and the weather's nice, I'll read as I walk here. Oh, wait, wait. How do you do that I just, and not trip? I, As someone who also walks I've, to campus. I walk a pretty, like, consistent route, so I kind of know. Oh, so, okay, okay. Um, But I, you do have to look alive, because yeah. otherwise you will fall in a hole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I try to walk on the treadmill. I will try to read 20 minutes a day professionally, just to kind of capture those moments. Right. So I don't read anything that's super 
deep. Right. I try to just read things that I find fun. Um, our students actually have joined in. So, so in the union, we have a small book club, which is kind of fun. Oh, so okay. I get to read things I wouldn't naturally read myself because um, it's things that they're interested in. So we all kind of take turns right. picking. So if students are interested in joining you in this, there's the possibility? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Do you have, and how would they do that? Just get in touch with you? Yeah. Uh, they can email me. That's probably, probably the best way or come by and see me. So particular genres, anything? All over the place. Nonfiction and I don't really gel. It takes me much longer to get through mm -hmm. a nonfiction book. I have to really be into it. So short books, long books? The longest one I did was about 500 pages. Oh. So, so in 136 books, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Okay, so I've also been told the lovely art on your arms connects in to yeah. your reading. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, there's a book uh, that is illustrated and written by a woman named Molly Idol. It's called Pearl, and it's about a mermaid that um, is frustrated that her job is that she just has to hold a pearl, and at the end, the pearl becomes much bigger than that. Um, and I really like the way the picture and the story come together, mm -hmm. so I wanted a piece of that to just kind of think about. Um, and then my koi fish, um, koi, um, swimming upwards means working against adversity and challenges. Mm -hmm. um, so during a time where I just felt a little personally challenged, this is how I decided to balance my life out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I get. And so. did it work? Did it help? It's good to yeah. remember when I feel a little like stressed or uh -huh. tense, I just kind of rub my arm or I think about it and know that it'll pass through. It'll pass. So. So, so for both arms, it's kind of inspirational kinds yeah. of things that help keep you focused yep. and going. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you something not so cool that I heard about you. Okay. You like black licorice jelly beans? They are my favorite. Yep. Oh, do tell. Gross. I know. It's very, it's a very heated topic. I don't know. I don't like the cheap black licorice jelly beans though either. So they do have to be... So decent. what's decent versus, uh, I think they're all gross. So what's I like a good decent. Twizzler, um, like, so black licorice in general, jelly belly jelly beans tend to be really good. Um, just the general brocks are not so good mm -hmm. or the kind of offshoot candy around Easter. But yeah, I, I've always really enjoyed that flavor. You, I cannot yeah. eat a lot of them at one time though. So is that your favorite flavor of jelly bean? I usually go between that and a cherry, yes. Oh, so the common favorite flavor. Yep. And then probably the least licorice. favorite. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. Good range for you. Yep. So so I heard you say something about Easter candy. Is that your favorite Easter candy? I mean, I like a good peanut butter egg. Mm. So Yeah, you and my husband. Yeah. Okay, what about marshmallow peeps? Not a fan. Even if they're stale? Nope. Well, see, give me a good stale marshmallow peep. I particularly like the purple bunnies these days. Okay. They Those have them for other with. seasons, so maybe you Yeah, so I've seen them for all. <laughs> I think they're flavored. As you know, I have a horrible sweet too, so yeah. sugar on sugar on sugar is good. But I actually like them when they're stale and hard rather than soft Yeah, marshmallows and, and I, I'm not a huge marshmallow fan, so I think that that's part of it. So that's not a good one. Yeah. So you also hike. I like walk. to be, yep, I like to yeah. walk, I like to run. So are there favorite places you do around here? Um, I really like the trail around the school system um, by the high school and the Y. So How I've, come? It's just a nice loop. Um, I can take my dogs there. It's pretty easy. It's around two miles. So um, it's got a sidewalk, so I don't have to dodge traffic <laughs> either. Right. So, right. Um, and generally, you will see somebody out there, which is kind of fun, to, especially regulars that you can eventually say hi to. Oh, cool. Good. And I have to ask only because I am a dog person. Okay. I hear you have two dogs. I do. I have a dachshund shih tzu mix named Sophie. So how big is Sophie? Uh, she's around 15 pounds, long hair. Oh, long hair. Yep. Like the so, shih tzu part. Yep. Super cute. Short legs. Yep. Yep. Big feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I have a terrier mix named Jake. Um, he kind of looks like the Spud McKenzie dog or the Target oh, dog. Oh, okay. Um, and he's around the same size. Uh, he's got longer legs, though. So. So do they walk or run with you or? No. No. They, no. No. Jake has never met a stranger. So inevitably, nice. every two seconds, we're meeting our new best friend. Um, and then Sophie is a very militant walker. 
Oh. So uh, she likes to keep her form and her shape. And <laughs> she does not want to stop. Doesn't want to stop. So. So how do Sophie and, get, and Jake get along, given their very different personality styles? Uh, it depends on the day, but uh, they just coexist more often than not. Jake likes to snuggle and lounge around, and she likes to play ball and mm-hmm. is a little bit more hyperactive, so they just kind of do their thing. Uh, and then we'll eventually sometimes get into it, but more often than not, just peacefully coexist. Lovely. Yep. Lovely. Okay, so we're at the beginning of the f- spring semester. Can you tease any cool thing that's coming up activities-wise? Ooh, um, I hope the union is really busy with stuff from SAB. Um, I know Becca has been working really hard with some stuff that uh, they have planned for the semester I'm really excited for. Um, I know IMS is really hoping to be a bit up and going. Uh, I'm trying to think what we have all this semester, but student activities board stuff is probably the biggest thing to be on the lookout for. Yeah. So we'll have some kind of concert, Um, comedian, something this semester. Yes, no. I sometimes we do. I think there's going to be some really good stuff that they have worked really hard to plan a good variety of things that students will enjoy. Lovely. That's well, my, I have to my say, way of not giving anything away totally directly. Oh, see, so you can't so, totally tease. Yep. Well, I have to say I love the uh, bucking bowl that we had yep. <laughs> and smashing things. Smash plates were, were really a huge fun. hit, yep. I heard. I, yeah. I know there some the DIY stuff is really popular mm-hmm. with students, so they've really been taking that into consideration. And um, some buddies shared some things I've got planned right before they left, so I'm excited to see them plan that fully out. Oh, cool. So the idea is everybody get involved. There's something yep. for everybody is my guess. When Even I look at everything you guys up. are doing. Even if it, sometimes it's okay just to show up yeah. and hang out. That's really all we right. want. Fabulous. Yeah. So one of my favorite parts of Tea Time with Sue is I'm not the one who actually has to reach into the teapot. It's me. My guests get to reach in. So if you want to reach in and grab something... And let us know what it says. How would you spend your ideal weekend? Um, I really like to plan mini vacations. Okay, such Uh, as? So, like, during spring break, I'm going somewhere for just two days. Um, So I like to try places out in, like, short spurts. And then when I get longer breaks, like during the summer or winter break, be able to go back and travel. So that's how I did New Orleans at first. Oh, cool. Um, I've done San Diego and uh, San Francisco. Um, Usually I want to, I want to go places, but usually the weather has not uh, (laughs) committed. Cooperated. Been my best friend. Yeah. Uh, So right now it's been mostly within the United States, no international travel just because of time. Mm -hmm. But um, I think just being like going and eating good food in places that sure. not getting up at any regulated time and being able to wander is what I really look forward okay. to on a weekend. So I'm going to the AAC, AACNU conference, American Association of State Colleges and Universities, or AACNU, sorry, American Association of Colleges and Universities, in San Francisco Ooh. in just over a week, right? I'm in tons of sessions, so I'm not going to have much time. But anything, any thoughts about San Francisco? Anything you think I have to absolutely eat? Because like like you, when I leave Kirksville, I love to eat. Love Um, to eat. There's a restaurant called the Tonga Room. It looks like a tiki bar. Oh, it's in a hotel. It's kind of fun. Um, They have a like a lazy river through the hotel. Um, Food there was pretty good. The Golden Gate Bridge was a lot of fun. Uh, we went and saw the Redwoods that weekend, which were, that was probably oh, nice. the biggest yeah, highlight, cool. but you won't get that. Right. Um, and then uh, in their Chinatown district, they have a fortune cookie factory that you can just walk in and eat oh, samples. Cool. Um, so that was, that was really fun, okay. just finding that little kind of hole in the wall. All right. So I'll ask you, see if I can get a, an okay. address for that. Okay. I'm not going to have, have much a bag time, from but it. that sounds, oh, so cool. <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> 
Laura, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks not only for joining me, but for making Truman fun and finding all kind of cool ways for our Try. students to get engaged <laughs> and our faculty and staff to get engaged with them. Yeah. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.